Welcome. Hello, Lee Irvine. How are you? Laura, welcome on board. I see all the inmates are checking in. <laughs> we live like inmates now. Everyone's confined and locked up in their, uh, in the dungeons. So, uh, anyway, I don't even know what day of quarantine this is. I stopped doing my show on March 15th, but we are officially quarantined on the 17th of March. Well, not quarantine, but a stay at home order. Um, and, uh, yeah, so whatever. Today's Friday that I know because I looked at my phone, saw the date on it. Uh, today is, uh, ask me anything, Facebook live. So, oh, Real, uh, Simard is my uh, cousin. He's, uh, signed in. He had an amazing career as being a horse jockey, uh, touring all over Canada, racing horses and, uh, yeah, nice to see you. All right. So hello from Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, if everyone's uh, confined in their homes, I don't know if the traffic really decreased because there's nobody really in Saskatchewan. So anyway, all right. Okay. Uh, you guys have any questions about hypnosis or about uh, how the subconscious mind responds or human behavior or human psychology or uh, shows or anything about my career or anything about... Uh, me personally, um, my life, or and I'll try to get to some of the, uh, um, you know, as many of the questions I can. That's the idea. So if you ask it once, don't ask it a whole bunch of times because I, I'm going to try to go through and and not skip forward. All right. So a question: Sean, barbershops must be closed in Vegas. Also, what are you saying? You know, I think it looks nice and clean, right? Look at that. I combed my hair. I haven't combed in a couple of days. Uh, that's actually, uh, I'm lying. That's not true. I've been shooting some videos for my Hypnosis 101 class. And uh, so I had a studio set up in my house and uh, I've been shooting the videos and they're all from the waist up. And I was, I'm wearing a blazer and a, a dress shirt and I'm wearing no pants. So that is a fact. All right. Uh, Matt, hello from Panama. I've actually been to Panama. Uh, I have... Um, a colleague, a friend of mine there who worked on the Panama Canal and he was a hypnosis student of mine a couple of years ago. And uh, so I went to Panama and uh, actually passed through on my way back from Brazil and stopped and checked out the Panama Canal and I got some really cool Panama rum, which I don't drink rum anymore, but that was back in the day. Anyway, uh, all right, uh, Matt Kerfield, you asked a question last week, but I was logging off. What's your question? Throw it back in here. Uh, question is, uh, uh, I haven't seen it yet, okay. Uh, has anyone, uh, Jared's asking, has anyone tried to fake being hypnotized on stage? Sure. Uh, but here's the, the, the hard part of that happening. When someone who is faking or trying to um, kind of, you know, trick the hypnotist, they're afraid of actually doing something wrong. So quite often what they'll do is they'll have their eyes closed and they'll pop them open and look to see what everyone else is doing first, then uh, do the behavior. So that's usually a, a tell, a tall tale sign that tells you kind of how, um, you know, how they're responding. That's why the first few routines in my show, I have them do with their eyes closed because now they're playing an orchestra. They're doing something that's requiring some type of movement and the audience is laughing. And when your eyes are closed and you're doing something, the audience is laughing. It's so hard to get over that self-consciousness about thinking they're laughing specifically at you. So they'll pop their eyes open and see what they're doing is if that's correct. A few other things that I'm also looking for, but it's very, very difficult to, to fake. I also, when I do a lot of my jokes on stage, um, I'll banter and have fun with a participant on stage who's hypnotized. It's okay that they laugh uh, because certain things can be funny. You know, like if they see someone itching themselves, they might look over and go, oh, that's, you know, what is he doing? That's funny. But if I do uh, any kind of joke that is that requires some type of cognitive thinking, some type of um, analytical thought, and they laugh at that joke, Usually that's a tell, tell sign that their conscious mind is way more active than I want it to be. So there's, I'm designing that specifically what's happening on the show because it's important. So hope that answers your question. Uh, how am I staying motivated? Who said I am? Who said I'm staying motivated? Uh, that's actually not true. I uh, have not been doing shows at night. I've been going to bed at a decent hour and I'm still up at 6.30 or 7 in the morning. I'm a morning person uh, and a lot like my dad. Um, and I would be happy to go to bed at 10 o'clock. So the fact that I've been doing a show for 13 years at 10 o'clock every night, six nights a week rather, uh, is a horrible thing for me. You know, I'd like, I'd rather be in bed. And my partner, Kate, oh my God, she's like a grandma. She, if she could be in bed at like 9.30, she'd be so happy and then sleep till 9.30 the next morning. She likes her sleep. All right. Uh, what should uh, someone look for in hiring a hypnotherapist? 
Well, that's a great question. And when I read that, uh, um, it, it reminds me of a couple of things. One, rapport. You want to have some type of rapport with the hypnotherapist because the truth is, ultimately, that's what hypnosis is. There has to be a trust, a little bit of an understanding. They have to, you know, obviously be educated enough about hypnosis. So ask a lot of questions. You'll immediately get a good vibe of who they are as a person. Uh, and so that's, that's vitally important is you somehow uh, try to get some type of rapport, get a free consultation. Most of them will talk to you for 20 minutes for free. And um, that's important. Training is also another thing. If you want to make sure that they're, you know, uh, certified with the, uh, um, with the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners or with hypnosis and, uh, the National Guild of Hypnotists. Those are kind of the two governing bodies. So you want to make sure they have some kind of training. Third, uh, you want to make sure that they're trained by me. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but no, there's some truth there. Because uh, I, I teach you know, a lot of really cool techniques that a lot of hypnotists don't use, one of them being transforming therapy, uh, which I'll be teaching in my hypnotherapy class uh, coming up uh, later this year. So that's, uh, I think, the biggest thing is you want to get some type of rapport and get a referral. Talk to people who've actually worked with them. If you can't find anybody, my partner Kate does private sessions. You can reach out to her. Uh, and um, you know, uh, email her at hypnosis at katesheeler.com and you can do a 20 minute private uh, consultation. Doesn't she doesn't, won't charge you anything. And she, she's terrible at sales. She's not gonna try to sell you anything. I tell her like, well, you should ask them to book. And she's like, no, nah, if they want my help, they'll reach out to me. So she's really low pressure and you just reach out to her. Again, uh, hypnosis at katesheeler.com. All right, oh, speaking of Kate, she's actually asking a question. Do you hypnotize your kids? I know the answer, but I thought it'd be useful since everyone's locked in with their kids. Uh, I haven't done anywhere near as much as I should in, in, lately, but hip, uh, kids are in the subconscious mind all the time. They're in an emotional state all the time. And so a lot of the things that we say to them, even though we may directly want to give them some type of a, of a, a message or a suggestion or direct some type of command that we want them to do, such as behavior modification or something like that, they're such a, they're in such an emotional state that they take everything with you know emotional heaviness so you have to be very very careful there's a, a hard, children have a hard time between separating between characteristics of their personality and their behavior so when you give them trouble for something they immediately take it as a personal attack and that's where they get really emotional so it's important that you separate the two when you're talking to your children as as opposed to uh, hey, stop doing that. That's, you know, absolutely wrong. Or that makes me upset when you do this type of behavior. And the difference is, is it makes it a lot easier for them that if it emotionally feels like an attack, they have the option of changing the behavior to stop the negative reinforcement. Does that sort of make sense? So they're looking for, you know, acceptance, love, that that's what children they pay their the currency with that emotion right they they want to please so it's important to separate and identify if you're attacking the behavior or the personality and almost all the time it's the behavior right so you want to make sure you separate that when you're talking to your children also when they're sleeping at night they're in a hypnotic state they're subconscious responding so when i go check my kids i still go to them uh, you know, the, my oldest one's gonna be 16. They wanna go in, she's sleeping. I come home from the show, I'll tuck her in and adjust the blankets and I'll talk to them. I'll say, hey, I, I hope you have a great day tomorrow. I'm so proud of who you are as a person and you're so kind and loving and I'm, I'm just so proud to be your dad. And they'll like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and they'll, they'll hear me and that's going in the subconscious. So don't underestimate how much the subconscious is listening when it comes to children. Hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, hello from Dallas. I love Dallas. I've been there quite a few times. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge JFK buff, so um, I enjoy uh, Dallas. Uh, Brian's asking, and have you Anthony Cool's show in Vegas? Have you seen? I presume is what you mean. Have I seen Anthony Cool's show in Vegas? And what did you think of his show compared to yours? Uh, we're so different. Anthony and I are buddies. Uh, I've seen his show. He's seen my show. Uh, Kevin Lapine also has a show down in Fremont. Uh, I've seen his show. He's seen mine. We're, we support each other. We get in group texts. And uh, we talk about business and we tease each other and we're great friends and we go for lunch quite often. And we're very, very different personalities and different styles and we draw different audiences. And I think his show's great and I think Kevin's great and I think they're both great people and we get along just fine and uh, it's great. 
Uh, Devin's asking, will you use distance on stage? Well, I'm currently not doing any shows, so I'm very much uh, practicing social distancing. But as far as contact, yeah, I'll modify some of the things in the uh, show uh, where there'll be a lot less contact, if any contact at all. Uh, near the end, just before we were wrapping things up, I was uh, doing contact like on a shoulder as opposed to um, you know, person touching right now, if I want to give them some type of suggestion, or I tap them with my foot, uh, creating, you know, no hands near their faces or hands to hand contact. So it's possible. I mean, because hypnosis is primarily done by voice. Obviously, it helps to have some type of physical contact because we can be giving suggestions based off that. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, you can create that distance and still give the suggestions without contact. All right, uh, Matt's asking, when practicing hypnosis, do you think it's easier with strangers more so than people that you know? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Some of the hardest people to hypnotize are your family members because they knew you before you were a hypnotist. They knew you when you were a schmuck, right? So it is absolutely uh, a lot easier to hypnotize someone when you come up to them and go, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm a hypnotist. Oh, wow, how long have you been doing that? Yeah, this amount of time, great. Uh, that there's less preconceived idea as about your inability as when you, uh, the, hip, the family knew you before you were hypnotized. So yes, much easier to hypnotize. Uh, strangers than it is people that you know, or at least knew you before you were a hypnotist. Okay. All right. Uh, what food items do I have in Canada? We talked about this in the last Ask Me Anything, but I have lots of stock up. I've got a case of hickory sticks, a, a big box of hickory sticks. I've got uh, big Turk candy bars. I've got uh, uh, cherry blossoms. I've got arrow bars. I've got, uh, I mean, Smarties. I mean, I'm hooked up. So I've got cheesies. I've got popcorn twists. That's a huge popular thing here in the household with the kids. Uh, so anyway, I got lots. What's my favorite bit to use in my show? Great question. Um, I think I've, I have a kind of a, an affinity to the voodoo doll. I've always kind of liked that routine, even though it's pretty mundane and easy because I've done it since day one. It's modified a little bit. Uh, the porn star routine at the very end of the show is also pretty crazy and fun. and allows a lot of the volunteers to kind of bring their own personality into it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I don't, I mean, I don't like, I don't really love a particular routine. It, Serves a purpose to the show, but it's not like I hold them dear to my heart. Uh, I used to do a Wild West gunfight. That was my mom's idea. She's like, why don't you do something that's good, the bad, and the ugly, something like that. And uh, so I developed a big, huge gunfight. And it's silly, and it was great. M maybe you know, it's on my YouTube channel somewhere, I, I think. All right. Um, hello from Red Deer. Hey, Red Deer. Been to Red Deer a lot. Um, that's in between Edmonton and Calgary in Alberta. All right. Shannon's asking... Um, uh, you hypnotized me in Vegas. Is it normal? I don't really remember what happened and that and about what I did, but I've seen the video. Yes, about seventy percent of people will remember bits and pieces, or even the show up to its entirety. It's only about thirty percent that have no recollection whatsoever, and that's just an average. Uh, and a hypnotist can also direct what the participants experience. So at the end of the show, I could say, "Hey, all of you on stage will not remember anything," and that's what they leave is with that suggestion. Or I can say. All of you on stage, you will remember everything that's happened in the show, and they will. So I can sort of control and guide uh, how that uh, how that happens, but I leave it open ended in my uh, show. So some of them who want to remember, or their subconscious wants to remember, they do, and others who don't, they don't. Uh, hello from Deadwood, Alberta. Ooh. <laughs> I know where that is. Uh, hi from Deadwood. Okay, hope your family are safe. We are. We're doing great. We're all. We got you know, all the kids are here and. You know, we might actually set up the tent this weekend and they can sleep in the tent. In Vegas, it's like 80 degrees. It's gonna be a little colder this weekend. We turned on the heat to the pool. So the pool's set at 92 degrees and the kids are swimming like two and three times a day. So they love it um, and it's great. Um, the, there's, I don't know if you can see the backyard. So we got the pool back there, you know. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, all right. Uh, can we get a uh, new hate girl and love girl compilation? Those are absolutely my favorite. Actually, maybe those are my favorite routines. Uh, th those are those are really really good, and it's a lot allows for a lot of banter back and forth. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll work on it. I'll see if I can get the video guys to. Right now, the video guy is uh, our video department is basically overwhelmed with the videos I'm shooting for my hypnosis one on one class and the stage hypnosis class. If some of you guys still want to get in on that, you can um, be register before our first live. 
thing comes up next week. So go to my website or email us uh, through the website, uh, info at marksavard.com. Always better to email through the website because a lot of the social media messages I don't see. Um, there's, there's a lot and, and I miss those. So um, and my team's not always looking at those. So email our office directly from my website if you want information on that. Uh, Grizzly's asking, hey Mark, how are things in Vegas? Quiet, I don't know, we're sitting in our house. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We got, I'm lucky that we have a great big backyard. Uh, my house sits on just shy of an acre, which is very rare for in Vegas. Uh, so we're in the city, sitting on just shy of an acre, so there's plenty of room for the kids to go and the circular drive out front, they get to ride their bikes, and it, we're just very, very fortunate to be, uh, you know, confined to this area, which has been really, really nice. Um, and watching a lot of movies and chilling and hanging out, but other than that, uh, weather's nice. That's all we really know. We haven't been out much. Um, Betty's like, you hypnotized my, my daughter and my granddaughter. Well, what happened to you? Why didn't you volunteer? Huh? You can't send the, the kid and the grandkid. Betty, you're up next, next time you come to Vegas. Uh, Brian's asking, if I were to hypnotize one celebrity, who would you want to hypnotize? I've hypnotized some celebrities. Um, but if I had to hypnotize a celebrity currently, whew, um, oh, that's a really good question. Maybe, maybe I would hypnotize... Jessica Chastain. Kate's yelling, Jessica Chastain. She knows how I feel about Jessica Chastain. That's a great choice. That is a, that's a great choice. Yeah, that, and we don't need to know why. All right. Uh, would you like some cold and snowy Alberta weather? My parents sent me a photo of their backyard up in Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada, and it's like this much snow, and no thanks. No, no, I, I, don't, I, I miss the people in Canada, but I do not miss the weather. Uh, and Trevor, I haven't seen you in years. Maybe you should come to Vegas and we can... Hang out, have some dinner. Uh, Vicky's asking, can you hypnotize me for the next few months? Put me to sleep for, <laughs> for a while. I know it's, uh, it's challenging out there. I know you guys are, some of you guys are struggling. I'm not saying Vicky, but I know some of you guys are out there are struggling. Um, you know, you're realizing that maybe you don't like your spouse <laughs> or maybe you're realizing that, you know, you love your kids, but you just don't like them. <laughs> we get all that, we get it. But here's an opportunity that at the end of this, you're confined and you're in a stay-at-home uh, order. So what are you gonna do with your life? If you don't like something about it, change it, right? And if you can't change it, then, then get rid of it. And if you can't get rid of it, then live with it. And those are really your three options. So you just have to apply yourself into what it is that you want. You know, if you're struggling with your relationship, you know, put your ego aside and stop focusing on, on just your perspective. A relationship's always 50-50, always 50-50. And you're always both responsible for either not giving enough or giving too much or whatever it is, you're both responsible. So sit down and actually take your attitude and your ego out of it and have a communication. Uh, and also put some time in for romance. Um, we've got the kids right now. Uh, the kids are all gonna go back to our exes uh, next week. And we've talked, Kate and I have talked about, we're gonna, we're gonna shower. We're gonna get ready. Um, she's like, I'm gonna put my makeup on and we're gonna dress nice and we're gonna go have dinner in the backyard. We're gonna set up a table, we're gonna have dinner in the backyard because you have to make time for romance. You can't always be slumming it, you know, and wearing sweatpants. I mean, I have a, this is my first day I'm wearing pants in, I don't know, four or five days. All right, uh, Jamie's asking, can I talk about impromptu hypnosis, handshake inductions, uh, PGO spike? I don't know what that is, I'm not familiar with it. Um, Handshake inductions, any, all these types of inductions really fit under one category. They're called a pattern interrupt. Some type of a pattern interrupt induction. And two things cause people to go into hypnosis. One, relaxation of the nervous system. Two, overload of the nervous system. The overload of the nervous system was a, uh, a concept designed by John Kappas where he talked about messaging. This is back in the 50s, 60s. We talked about upping the message units to the conscious mind where the conscious mind cannot, um, cannot actually to handle that information. So the subconscious mind has to overtake. Uh, that's kind of the, what the whole overload concept of entering hypnosis is all about. And in combination with a lo quick loss of equilibrium and a startling command like sleep, it, those things put together, because when the equilibrium gets lost, the subconscious mind is responsible for balance. It steps forward. So when it moves forward, I want to start hammering suggestions into the subconscious mind. That's the science of what happens in rapid induction. And if you understand what the science is, 
the, none of the techniques matter. It could be a handshake or it could be a, a face, a hand to face thing, or it could be a magnet thing, or it could be any type of, of induction. As long as you're interrupting the pattern and you give really three things, startling command, loss of equilibrium, and of course, up, upping the message units and overloading the conscious mind. That's really the key. All right. Um, I specifically in my uh, hypnosis classes talk about different techniques um, that you can do that follow that, that rule set, certain how you grab the arm and all that kind of stuff, which is a little, I mean, that, we could do that for two hours. All right, hopefully that answers some of your questions a little bit. Uh, hello from Fort Wayne, Indiana. What's up, Fort Wayne? Uh, loved your show when I was there. I'm definitely come see it again when I come back to Vegas. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Vegas is going to need you guys. I mean, right now we're all acting like inmates, but at some point when the, when the inmates get out and the crazies get loose, uh, you guys need to come back to Vegas. Uh, Shelly's asking, if you ever come back to Northern Alberta, I'll pay you to hypnotize. Uh, Mark, he acts too much like his father. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm not a miracle worker. Uh, Grizzly's saying, I watch your shows every morning. Well, thank you so much. You can watch them in the afternoon and the evening evenings uh, if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, Devin saying the handshake induction is now taboo, uh, just temporarily. People, you know, people are going to get over it. It's going to be no different than anything else. You know, it's, uh, yeah, we can do different types of inductions, but uh, we don't have to give up on it yet. Uh, but once things change and we get on the head of the curve of this coronavirus and, a, and a, a, a vaccine comes out and the numbers go away and, you know, the herd has it and they have antibodies built to it, and it's going to change until the next time a novel coronavirus comes out. <laughs> um, so I stopped doing the kissing induction because it was too much. All right, uh, Tom saying your show's a great time, funny as hell. Well, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Uh, Jackie's hello from Illinois, will you do a show here sometime? I have been to Illinois a few times. I don't have anything planned in the near future. Matter of fact, let me check a schedule. I've got nothing in the near future. <laughs> That's okay. I'm actually, I, people, you know, people ask me, uh, as family members, like, do you miss doing shows? Uh, no, I have been doing shows for so long. I'm actually enjoying the break. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be another week or two where I'll, I'll start feeling a little antsy about wanting to do a show. But right now, I'm like, no, I've, I've discovered this thing called Netflix. I don't know if you guys have heard of Netflix, but this is this thing where you can watch videos and it's a demand. Cause I mean, I never get to watch it. I go home, you know, put my kids to bed and then I go to work do the show, and then I come home and go to bed. So I, I don't, watching TV at night is not, it's just not an option for me. So, and this has been really nice. All right, uh, Darren Smith's asking, how effective is hypnosis in quitting smoking? It's actually one of the most effective ways to quit smoking, but understand that hypnosis is not a tool. Rather, it's not a cure, it is a tool. It is not a cure, it is a tool. Um, so you have to want to quit smoking. Someone sneezing back there, is that coronavirus? Stay away. Um, <laughs> nowadays is getting crazy. Uh, if you have to cough, you, you need to you just swallow it down and shove it down because you don't, um, allergies right now, if you've got allergies, I mean, people are going to kill you out there. So stay home. Uh, yeah. So anyway, hypnosis is very, very effective with, uh, with stop smoking, but the person has to want to quit because remember hypnosis is a tool, not a cure. So they have to want to quit. There has to be desire and willingness for change. If not, they love their cigarette, right? It's their best friend. So you're now breaking that friendship up. So they have to want to participate uh, in the process. So that's the key. A lot of times I've had clients come up to me and go, hey, I want to quit smoking. Well, why? Well, I've got to get the old lady off my back and my kids won't shut up. And I've got to do something. I'm like, do you want to quit? Well, no, but I've got to do it for them. So I've kicked them out of my office. I'm like, go back, leave, come back when you're ready to quit. And then sure enough, a couple of weeks later, a month later, they're like, I thought about it and I, I want to quit. I really need to quit. And that changes their mindset. All right, uh, Kristen's asking, what diagnosis and or negative habit do you think is most responsive to hypnotherapy? That's a great question. Uh, that is, is such a tough thing to, to narrow down because they all sort of matter the same and they all have different emotional weights. For example, if I have a fear of public speaking, that is based on huge anxiety. And it's like, let's say a level 10. And just the idea of coming up and speaking in front of three people makes me just want to poop my pants. Th that has the emotional weight. 
Whereas someone who may be struggling with eating, but they don't have negative subconscious programming about weight loss or body shaming or anything like that. They're just like, ah, I'm just making stupid choices when I eat. I'm, I just like the sugar and chemically I'm a little addicted to sugar. Then it, they may respond you know, well, but the, the emotional weight's ne not necessarily there. So they get some, some benefit from it. But the person who has major anxiety issues, there's such a dramatic change. You can also flip that where someone who, you know, their public speaking is a little bit concerning them. Like, ah, I get a little butterflies, but, but it doesn't have that same weight where someone who has long time programming of being shamed by their parents or, or whatever, they've been called, you know, heavy and fat their whole lives and they feel worthless about themselves and it's deep seated. There's an emotional heaviness there require a lot more work. So in one scenario, it could be a very, very profound response. And in the other scenario, it's the exact opposite. So we're, it's not so much the behavior that, or the actual ailment that is the issue, it's the emotional weight that, that it carries for that individual. So that's sort of more how I measure it. So it can be very effective with weight loss for some person and a lot more of a difficult challenge to get results for another. Again, it just depends on the, the ailment, the ailment of what it is that we're trying to, to fix. And of course, how good your hypnotist is. Uh, Asayas, if I pronounce it right, Asayas, uh, I'd love your show. I've been hypnotized three times by you. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you know, I always feel like, uh, like when uh, someone who's been hypnotized by me, uh, I mean, I, I know the people for a brief amount of time and I do shows all the time. So the, the, not being able to remember some people sometimes makes it challenging. Uh, but they'll come up to me and go, oh my God, I was hypnotized and it was so great. And I'm like, I don't really remember. So it, it's like a weird dynamics, you know, of, uh, of this relationship. It's like, you know, one person having sober sex and the other person being completely drunk. So the person sober is like, oh my God, it was amazing. And the person who's drunk is like, oh, I don't really remember. So uh, sometimes I like to think that it feels that way. All right, Joseph Saxton, do you find at a time like this, it would be great to work on new material. Yes, but I have other things that are more important. I'm working on a Hypnosis 101 class where I'm recording it right now. And I'm gonna be doing some online classes of the stage hypnosis. And then I'm work gonna be finally releasing, I think soon, my Mind Matrix program, um, which is awesome. And so those things have taken priority to me. Uh, would it be nice to put new material on the show? Yeah, but I got other things that are more important like watching Tiger King on Netflix. That's, you can't work all the time, you need to break, you know. All right, Heather's asking, hello from Edmonton. I remember first show I saw in Valley View at the Tavern. <laughs> oh God, you hypnotized me, uh, a few of my friends that night and it was a blast. That was, okay, so in Valley View, there's this hotel that sits basically on the edge of the highway. I don't know what, high, Highway 43? I don't remember. Um, or Highway 2, Alberta 2, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so. We're doing the routine in a small little bar and I remember it being maybe summertime or springtime and the door was open to the bar and it was again a small little motel in a town of I don't know, a couple thousand people. And I did a Chucky routine with a Chucky doll and Chucky comes to life and it was, they're supposed to react and you see him move out of the corner of your eye and you're kind of creeped out by him. Those of you who have seen my Chucky routine will remember. And it, you know, it's like, oh, I'm kind of, kind of freaked out because you see the doll moving and it's just supposed to be more of a subtle response. And it kind of gradually gets a little bit more intense, but obviously it's not crazy. Well, one girl, she's absolutely terrified. So she gets up and runs away from Chucky, runs out of the door and starts running down along the side of the highway. And she just leaves, just skipping down. So my stage assistant's chasing her and finally grabs her and brings her back. And then we, of course, uh, dealt with that situation then. But anyway, a lot of fun times back in Valley View. Those were when the show was developing. I was developing my career. And I remember hypnotizing uh, Glenn. Um, he was uh, hilarious. And um, anyway, that was a lot of fun. Hello from Newfoundland. Uh, thanks for uh, signing up at noon and, and not at 12.30 because Newfoundland's always a half hour behind. Susan, hello. I just printed one-on-one -on -one manual to start today. Welcome to the class. I'm glad that you're uh, on board. I know it's a lot of printing, uh, but uh, hopefully you're gonna start watching the videos right away. We've got a bunch of them uploaded. Uh, and uh, yeah, so hopefully you're, you're gonna enjoy. And then we'll do the live thing, I think next week. So get caught up. All right, Brian, what are your favorite shows to see outside of the V Theater? 
Uh, I'm a huge fan of Carrot Top. I talked about this last week. Talked about um, uh, enjoying his show. Absence is a great show to see as well. And um, one of my favorite acts is in Opium and Officer Vasquez. Those of you who have seen that act, it is fantastic. I can't even tell you anything about it. When it opens back up and Vegas opens back up, come see it. All right. And hello from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I love your show. I'd love to see you one day live in person, but for now, watch on YouTube. Thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Appreciate that. By the looks of your backyard, you're not in Canada. No, I am not. I'm in Las Vegas. I've been living in Las Vegas for 17 years coming up in this July, and I love it. It's home. I uh, love the city. Uh, I do miss the people back in Canada. Uh, who is my inspiration? Uh, I saw my very first hypnotist show, and actually, those of you who signed up for the one-on-one class will see I put some footage of him, uh, Preston. Preston was a hypnotist that toured all over Canada for years, and he was, if he wasn't seven feet tall, uh, it's because he was so thin, he looked really, really tall. And I talk about this in the class too, he had uh, big, huge hands, and he'd hold the microphone, and he could all put his thumb on the top and his finger on the bottom if he wanted to, and a deep, powerful, commanding voice. And I saw his show, and uh, I was very inspired. Um, I was curious about how you could say some words, and that would, invoke some type of behavior in another human being. And I wanted to understand how that worked. Uh, so I was curious about it. And so Preston was, um, was a, an inspiration. And I saw Ravine, Ravine was an inspiration as well. I saw him perform uh, quite a few times and got a chance to meet him and develop a relationship with him as well. And uh, obviously both of them have since passed. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, there you go. Um, I made me laugh when you said Deadwood. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> okay. Uh, Betty says, uh, oh, but be you being hypnotized, I cannot do the poll. Yes, you could. You don't have to flip upside down. You don't have to, you know, uh, get crazy. You can, you know, work the poll a little bit. Why not? Uh, Garth, like your shirt. Uh, thanks. This is the, uh, all the Renaissance artists. Um, Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, you get the idea. Um, and they have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle bands on to the matching corresponding artist. It's probably my favorite shirt, and it is the shirt I get the most amount of compliments to, because they look at it, takes them a moment, and they go, oh. So, glad you enjoyed the sh shirt, Garth. Uh, Craig uh, Furlong, uh, what's your favorite rapid induction, and what advice do you give? Do you get more success with rapid inductions, and, and when are your books out? Uh, good questions, great questions. Uh, stay safe, you too. Uh, my favorite rapid induction is basically just a standard uh, handshake, uh, hand pull. Um, some type of a hand pull induction coming from a handshake. That's one I use the most. Do I find um, to gain increased uh, success rate with it? There's a couple of things that need to happen. Again, remembering the science. Where it's, everything that happens in rapid induction happens in just regular inductions as well, but it's just a short amount of time for rapid inductions. And so a lot of it is the preconceived setup of how you're positioning yourself to that person. You know, confidence, rapport, all of those things really matter. Um, if you haven't seen my YouTube video, I have a YouTube video, I don't know what it's called. Um, I think it's just called Marks of Art, Rapid Inductions maybe. I don't know, let me just see. Um, and if you pull up that YouTube video and you'll see a whole bunch of different techniques. Um, and uh, so, like a different variety of techniques. And you'll see that it really isn't about the technique. It's about the setup and the approach that I have coming to the person. Um, all right, so yeah, just look up Rapid Hypnosis Mark Savard and my two videos show up there, How to Hypnotize in Seconds and Amazing Instant Hi Hypnosis. So both of those kind of, you'll see a whole variety of them in there. And I'm gonna give you a little secret. About 30% of those rapid inductions I made up on the spot, maybe even 50%. I just made up on the spot because of the situation. So it isn't necessarily about the technique, it is about the intent. The intent of what's gonna happen. There was no way that some of these people were gonna escape hypnosis. So, and again, I'm maximizing uploading the, or sorry, uh, messaging units, uh, you know, increasing the amount of message units that are coming into the, the conscious and the subconscious mind. So again, there's a science of what's happening there and I really go through this in my class, but um, hopefully that is a satisfactory answer for now. Uh, Eric uh, Schultz, never all tricks, I'm not a good subject. That is no way to talk about yourself, seriously. Of course you're a great volunteer or subject. Uh, so I'm not gonna waste the hypnotist time. That's not true. Here's what's happening to you, Eric. Um, the issue is the subconscious and the conscious mind do not work well together. 
they have this relationship. So it's important that in order to get the subconscious response, you have to let the conscious mind go out of the way. And you're probably one of those people that analyzes the process, right? Goes through the relaxation. Ooh, ooh, I'm, I think I feel that. The moment you say something like that and you're paying attention to that, it minimizes, it diminishes the subconscious response. So keep that in mind. Sometimes just being hypnotized on a regular basis allows your conscious mind to get bored of the process. And when that happens and your conscious mind stops participating, the subconscious mind begins to uh, become more prevalent and take effect. So don't give up. You can be, everyone can be hypnotized, even you. All right, hello from Calgary. Oh, hi, Calgary. Welcome on board. Do I ever take my training classes on the road? John's asking. I have. I taught in London, England, and I taught in Brazil uh, two years ago. Uh, so yeah, I do. And I teach here. Just those three places. And online. So I'm taking worldwide. Worldwide, online. Sign up. You can sign up. Um, right now, we're just started the one-on-one. Classes are being uploaded. Email my office and you can get information if you want to sign up. Uh, how does hypnotherapy work with someone who's grieving? Really well. As a matter of fact, fantastic. Um, email my office if you want more information on that. And I know that uh, uh, my partner Kate is doing private sessions and she can help you with that. So uh, email hip hypnosis at katesheeler.com. Um, Jack, uh, Garth saying Maria wore the stormtrooper outfit last night. Ooh, that sounds sexy. Does it make weird sounds? Anyway, uh, do certain conditions make one more susceptible to hypnosis? I found I get easily hypnotized. I was even on one of your shows. Yeah, social environment has an influence in hypnosis. For example, let's say there's a young guy, he's out with his college buddies and they come to the show and there's like six or eight of them and they've been shotgunning beers and they're like, ah, let's get crazy. And they run up on stage and they want to hypnotize and their psychic defenses are very minimized. Same guy, pull him out and he comes to the show with his fiance's parents who he's now met for the first time on this weekend and they're like, go out and be hypnotized. What do you think his psychic defensive level is going to be? It's going to be way up. He doesn't want to do or say anything that's going to be embarrassing to the new in-laws. So his relaxation ability is going to diminish. There's going to be some type of protective mechanism. So social environment absolutely can change. There's many different conditions, but that's just one an example. Walter, hello from Grand Prairie. Hey, Walter is my old, my old uh, teacher from way, way back in... Uh, in high school, junior high and high school, and um, yeah, good to see you, Mr. C. Um, I've always enjoyed you, and uh, you know, I know we connect on uh, social media once in a while, so nice to see you, nice to see you up here. Uh, all right, um, can you teach how to hypnotize so I can hypnotize my mother-in-law? <laughs> is there a better reason to learn hypnosis? There is not. Uh, that's the best one. Yeah, I'm teaching online classes. I've been chirping about it uh, a lot, so uh, sign up. It's really a lot of fun. It'll change your life, I promise. Uh, Jamie, been to my show, a lot of fun, can you hypnotize people through video? Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, Kate, my partner, who I've mentioned many times, has uh, does all of our sessions over Skype, or Skype and FaceTime. So just because I'm not there, if, for example, go ahead and close your eyes. So if you close your eyes right now and I say, take a nice big deep breath in and exhale. Could you tell if it was me standing right next to you or if it was the speaker of the phone or the laptop or wherever you're watching this? Speaking to you, you can't tell the difference. And hypnosis is an internal process. It's not something I'm gonna to do to you, it's something I'm going to bring out of you. So yes, you can hypnotize over video. Eric Ulkovich, all the way from Europe, from uh, Sweden, uh, right, sweet. Uh, good to see you. Uh, if you were to train a team of salespeople to 10 times their performance, what would you do with them? What techniques and what would mindset? Not asking for a friend. <laughs> You're asking for yourself. Uh, good, yes, from Sweden. There, it says right there. Okay, uh, Eric, great question. There's a lot of different things I would, because you've taken my class before. I would teach a lot about the mind rules, about what, how to influence the subconscious mind, what's changing the subconscious mind, and remember the eight rules of the mind as well. Um, that also is something I teach, and I, I marry that into Salesforce, right? Because ultimately, um, sales is is about rapport, about knowledge, about some type of client uh, relationship with the salesperson. So the moment you understand how that operates, that's what I would do. I would also do the wise one um, demonstration with them and let them tap into themselves because if they can grow personally, everything else around them grows. Anyway, I taught like a, a one and a half hour lecture keynote on this. So there's lots of things we can go over. Uh, maybe I'll do a program on that and get you guys the information. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack Watkins, I uh, hope all's well, all's well, hope all's well with you. 
I go by Bazooki uh, on social media. Hi, Chris. Okay, uh, I've seen the show 24 times. That's a little creepy and weird. And block. I'm kidding. Uh, good nice to see you, Chris. Uh, maybe one day we can grab a beer and talk hockey. We can grab a club soda and talk hockey because I don't drink alcohol anymore. I haven't for almost three years. No reason, just health reasons. Uh, sadly, the sands aren't great, but we can talk Oilers and Knights. Uh, last Monday, March 31st, the Golden Knights were supposed to be at Edmonton playing the Oilers. And I had a moment where I felt a little, a little sad. Sad. Uh, I miss hockey. Uh, why do you, uh, why some people cannot be hypnotized and ask them to be down stage, uh, take them off stage? I'm doing a generic shotgun approach when I'm doing an induction on stage. And there's many social things that are influencing why they can't be hypnotized or why they can be. Um, and ultimately, that's the, the biggest thing. Everyone can be hypnotized, but it has to be the right situation in the right setting. On a one-on-one, -on -one, I guarantee hypnosis. I guarantee you get hypnotized because I, I can change and modify techniques that's good for that person. But on the stage show, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a percentage of the people that are gonna respond to a shotgun approach of a, a generic suggestions of hypnosis, and I'm gonna take the best ones I can from that. So that's pretty normal. Uh, Lisa, hey, Lisa Foreman, uh, good to see you. I think we kissed in second grade. Uh, no, eighth grade, I mean, eighth grade. Ninth grade, maybe. Hmm, good to see you. Uh, okay, uh, Bill is like, hey, Windsor, Ontario. Uh, Lisa's probably like, uh, God, I wish I wouldn't have signed on. Uh, all right, hey, from Windsor, Ontario. Um, guest on, uh, a former guest, I would imagine, uh, on my stage. Love your show, haven't been there in a long time. Um, great, that's awesome. Thank you, thanks for being on stage. What am I binging right now? Uh, well, we finished Tiger King, which uh, was really good, but it wasn't as great as, um, you know, it just became repetitive after a while. Um, you know, and God, it was that bitch Carol Baskin. Uh, anyway, so that's, we watched that. Um, and then uh, we watched Star Wars with the girls, kind of getting that all over again. But we haven't started anything new. Have we started anything new, Kate? Not really. No, I, we're open to suggest. Oh, we watched McMillions. McMillions was fantastic. I really, really liked McMillions. Um, I think, I don't think it's on Netflix, though. Where was it on? HBO. You have to get it on HBO. So you need HBO. HBO Go and you get a documentary. So uh, McMillions was fantastic. Man, you're uh, Kate's wearing Chewbacca slippers. Um, they're uh, Chewbacca's and they're very very loud. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm open to suggestions of what to binge. Uh, Twelve forty three. Oh, I've been going a long time. All right. Uh, how do you know what volunteers to choose in your show? It's a great question. Um, a lot of it, I've been doing it for so long, a lot of it, just a gut feeling and I kind of know, but I'm, I'm looking at the moment they walk on stage, I'm watching how they're behaving, how they're behaving with their friends. I'm starting to keep an eye on it. And I teach a whole section in my class. It's very difficult to, to kind of get into the, the meats of this, but ultimately I'm watching how they're responding. I have to do it very quickly, remember, right? Because I'm going from hypnosis to a suggestibility, or sorry, a challenge where they can't pull their hands apart into an orchestra routine and then kind of a hot and cold routine, then I'm picking my people. So I'm really trying to get it as quickly as possible. A lot of it, just experience and gut feeling. The beginning of my career, I really would like eye them up and be like, what are they doing? Who's moving? Who's responding? Whereas now I just kind of look and I can tell how someone's responding, how great they're gonna be. So, uh, hello from Killam, Alberta. Hello, Killam, Alberta. I've been there plenty of times, obviously. Um, great hearing you again. Hi, Chris. Um, my son's been watching your videos to learn from you. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm, that's fantastic. Uh, all right. Uh, how effective are hypnosis audio programs? Very, very effective. And there's some customization that is lost because customization in a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, you know, but it's not, but the recordings are great. As I mentioned earlier, if you were to just close your eyes and hear me say, take a nice big deep breath in, let your body relax, could you tell if it was me or if it was the speaker in a recording? You can't tell the difference. So hypnosis, again, is an internal process Keep that in mind, they're very, very effective hypnosis audio programs. Uh, Marty Marcus, hello, it's still cold in Edmonton. Um, love, looking forward to seeing you next time in Vegas. Um, am I still dabbling in close-up magic? No, that, I mean, I did a little close-up magic in my late teens, uh, and no, I, no, I don't, no, no, maybe I should. Uh, Brent's put some YouTube links up there. I'm guessing this is the YouTube videos I was talking about earlier. Thanks, Brent. Uh, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it takes you to some other hypnotist channel. Uh, Tim Barlin, hello, good to see you. Uh, Tim has taken every single class I've ever offered. 
<laughs> and multiple times. Tim is a professional student, and I love him. Uh, hi from Texas, completely down to be hypnotized. All right. <laughs> Uh, James, well, Mark, Brazil here. Hypnosis getting much more relevant over here. That's awesome. I enjoyed my time in Brazil. A lot of the, lots of hypnotists in Brazil. They, it, it is really blowing up over there. It's pretty cool. Um, Sheila Marlowe is asking, can we hypnotize to help a smoker to stop? Yes, we talked about that earlier. Um, yes, very, very effective. Hypnosis is a tool, not a cure. Um, so know that. Phil Corey may hypnotize folks to stay home. Yes, I wish, but you can't hypnotize stupid. That's the problem. Uh, Clem Savard's watching. Hey, my uncle, what's up? Good to see you. Um, and yeah. Miss your face. I'd like to see it in person sometime real soon. Um, right. And greetings all the way from Pakistan. Uh, Tariq, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, hello, back in Pakistan. Hope all is well out there. Um, hi, um, uh, Tara's hi. Okay, Anthony, um, why did you make me get dirty with a sheep on stage? I don't remember doing that. Oh, yeah, we have the little blow-up sheep. Oh, the blow-up sheep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, we just give people choices. If you don't want the choice, you hand it back, you get a different choice. You chose it. You said, oh, I'll take it. So don't even start. Oh, there was one guy on stage. Maybe it's you. I don't remember. But uh, there was one guy on stage that <laughs> did the, uh, grabbed the blow-up sheep, and he was wearing cowboy boots, and he puts the back legs of the sheep in the top of his boots. And then he's, you know, having relations with the sheep. And it was very puzzling. After a while, I'm like, why do you, why do you do that? He goes, oh, well, because you, you, and then you put the sheep on the edge, and he has it at the edge of the stage. So the edge of the stage, so that they can't move forward, and they're caught in the boots, so they're constantly moving back. He goes, that's the best way. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Somebody's clearly practiced. So anyway. Um, Kate Bevan Marks, what can hypnotists do to burst for the development of skills while staying at home? Take my class. Uh, online classes, uh, obviously practice uh, hypnotizing your stuffed animals um, and practice working techniques that are non-contact. Um, that's really all you can do at this point. You know, I mean, I, uh, when I used to tour, I had a trailer full of gear. If I still had all that, I would unload the gear, load it back into the trailer, unload the gear, load it back into the trailer, practice that a little bit. But anyway, containment on Netflix is pretty good. Binge for the time. All right. Containment. We'll add containment to the list. I'm new to the hypnosis world. Hi, hi Margaret. Uh, I have a test uh, person that wants to help with his alcoholism. Is something I should say yes to or, or should I get help? Uh, great question. You can, if you did a lot of positive suggestions about alcoholism and put them in hypnosis, and if they have a desire and willingness for change, you can get some great results. There's some advanced hypnotherapy techniques that could um, make it a little easier, more effective but that doesn't necessarily need to happen. I hypnotized some people with direct suggestions with some crazy things that they wanted to change and got some great results. Other times, it just means that the more advanced, like transforming therapy and things like that, gestalt dialoguing, uh, those types of things can make it more effective, um, but again, they're not required, okay? Uh, all right, uh, Tara, so I showed along when you had to guess the stammer. Message me about that when you have a chance, message us. Uh, email us that maybe if you have one or you're looking for help, um, we can get you some of that. So, all right. Uh, Outlander is a great series. Not child-friendly, though. Okay. Outlander? Uh, I've already read the first book. Oh. I'm into it. Okay. Kate said she's read the book and she's into it. She's a book reader. Uh, I always watch the movie <laughs> or the series. All right. So you're into it? We'll watch it? Very into it. Outlander. Okay. Good. Hello from Jacote, Alberta. Jacote is where my parents were raised. Small little town of like... Eight people, or <laughs> no, I don't know, it's a little bit more than that. Uh, my grandfather uh, had the uh, Jacques Rote Cafe, and he had a little barber shop, and he had a little cafe there, and gas station, and, and uh, his post office box was 12. Post office box 12. So just to give you an idea of how big the town is. Um, anyway, the great community. And he used to have uh, the hockey rink, the little outdoor hockey rink was behind his place. I can't tell you how many times we played at that rink during Christmas breaks, and it was awesome, and great memories. So hello, Jacques Rote. Hi from Lethbridge. Hi from Sundry. Oh, God, lots of people checking in. Could have also help with someone with short-term memory loss? Yeah. Could have also help someone with short-term memory loss? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Could some hypnosis help someone with short-term memory loss? Uh, being 
I'm being silly. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, if there's physical damage that's happening, that's a little more difficult. But to exercise the mind, the mind is a muscle, you know, the more you flex it, the more it gets used. So there's different little tips and tricks and techniques that you can, uh, you know, to do that. So yeah, I, I have a memory recording um, that I would sell like an MP3. Uh, so if that interests you, it could help with that. So let's go to my website. Uh, how do I attempt to explain to folks that hypnosis is real? It, hypnosis is a state that lies between the awakened state and the sleep state. You have to pass through hypnosis on its way. It's a natural state of consciousness as normal as dreaming. Matter of fact, if I could take someone and relax them and bring them closer to sleep where they experience dreamlike characteristics while being, being completely awake, is that possible? And they say, well, yeah, maybe... Is dreaming possible where you can live in an alternative, al basically an alternative reality momentarily while you're sleeping? Yeah. Well, hypnosis is that, but just more awake. Hmm. That sort of makes sense. And again, hypnosis is real. It doesn't matter if they believe it or not. It's like gravity. You, know, you don't have to believe in gravity. It still works. Uh, all right. Uh, San Francisco. Hello. We're supposed to go to San Francisco. Kate and I on, um, on Cinco de Mayo. We we're going to go see Michael Bublé and we're going to fly there. And uh, I'm off on, on Cinco de Mayo, but uh, now it's been postponed and it's been canceled. So, but I like San Francisco, great city. Okay, um, we're coming up to, I, I was supposed to only do a half hour. Um, okay, we'll go eight more minutes and then we'll do an hour, but that's too long. It's too long. Uh, you guys are probably bored of me. Heaven does back in 2012, I watched a DVD, most fun moments of my life. Great, 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 great. I'm glad. All right, um, okay, all right. Can hypnosis be used to treat fibromyalgia? Yeah, because not necessarily the actual disease. You can enhance the body's ability to heal, you enhance the body's ability to deal with pain. You can take all of those things and, and basically increase your body as an organism to heal better and to manage um, the symptoms and pain. But you know, sometimes it's, you can't necessarily, maybe you could cure them, I, I, but I don't promise because now I'm dealing with medical world, right? So you have to be very, very careful with hypnosis. I mean, I put my track record up against anybody, but I can't make crazy claims, even though I do. Uh, all right. I got hypnotized by you last year. Loved it. I was the last man standing on stage. I win. <laughs> all right, Thomas. Uh, wife got a hypnotist for my birthday. Okay. She, she, a Russian hypnotist. She's Russian. Or is the wife Russian? Didn't work so well with a bunch of Russian friends uh, laughing. <laughs> you have found certain nationalities harder to hypnotize than others. Not necessarily nationalities, but the language barrier becomes an issue. Uh, so that, that, could be, that could be a problem. So when you don't understand the language and you're held up on the words that are being said to you or the words you're hearing, if they're hard to understand, so yeah, I mean, but not necessarily nationalities. I mean, some nationalities are more reserved than others, but for the most part, no. Uh, all right. Um, how do you manage anxiety and isolation during quarantine? Tell you what, um, in this chat, uh, Brent, if you're still on here, uh, can you send them, do we, if we have the page linked, uh, how about you guys have a free stress relief program from me? You just, uh, Brent will put the link in here um, and then just go to the webpage, put it in your name, download the free thing. Cool? Um, all right, okay, so here we go. Um, uh, Midnight Diner, Tokyo Stories is worth watching. Okay, we'll add that. Midnight Diner, can you put that on our list? Midnight Diner. Uh, 21st birthday was Brandon. Uh, we came to participate in your show. Would that still video still be available? No, unfortunately. Our videos go back about three years to 2017. Sorry, that sucks. You're going to have to come back and hypnotize again. Um, Wayne Martin, uh, loving this. I'm from the UK and hoping one day come to the States to your show. I'm a trained hypnotherapist. Nice to meet you, Wayne. Uh, can you do hypnosis on Facebook Live? Possibly. Can be done. Maybe I'll do it. Eh, maybe we'll do it on the next one or whatever. Um, all right. Okay. Do I still do show hypnosis in Vegas? Uh, no. Everything's closed in Vegas, so we're not. I'm not doing shows. Uh, nothing's going on. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. But we will be soon. Hopefully soon. I'd be surprised if we don't if we open before July 1st. July 4th weekend, maybe that'll be the grand opening. Um, Divad, Divad, right? Pronounced correctly. Sorry, good late getting here. How much success have you had working people on weight loss? Lots of success. Uh, very, very successful. Uh, weight loss is one of the easiest things to get results and it's measurable results, which also helps. 
Um, but yeah, hypnosis and weight loss really go hand in hand. I sell more weight loss programs than uh, all the other ones by like a five to one margin, maybe more. Uh, so it's very, very effective. Brent put up the stress relief program. Thank you, Brent. He's on it. Man, guys dialed in. And uh, we, uh, we work together. Uh, Brent's been with, working with me for a long time and full-time employee with me. But prior to that, we worked together and collaborated on the show and he wrote music for my show. And uh, we don't live in the same city, so we always social distance. Uh, and, uh, but we, uh, we talk a lot. We spend a lot of time on FaceTime, a lot of time communicating. And he has been working with me for a long, long time. And let me just tell you how it started. And I'll end with this story, okay? I'm gonna end with this story. All right, so Brent comes to see my show at Yuck Yucks. In, it's a comedy club in Calgary, Alberta, and we had never met before. And he comes to my show, and he's a music designer, right? And, he's, and we're, I'm young, I, gosh, I don't remember how old I was, uh, 22 or something, and he's a couple of years older than me. So we're these two young, you know, both of us skinny runts, we're both a little, uh, a little soft now, but uh, skinny little runts, right? And uh, I do my show, and he comes up to me after the show, and he's like, that show was a really great man, really great, but your music sucks. And I literally, inside my mind, I said to myself, who the fuck does he think he is? And right as I'm thinking that, he says, you're probably thinking, who the fuck do I think I am? And that was this moment where I'm like, okay, we're, we're, we think the same. And uh, he goes, uh, yeah, well, I can understand, you know, I understand that you probably think that. And, and uh, so I'm putting my money more in my mouth is, I'm gonna bring you some music that you can listen to next week and I wanna write custom music for your show. So at this time, I had brand spanking new Sony mini disc players. They were barely out on the market. It was the newest thing, little mini discs. And uh, so I'm a big deal, right? But he's a sound guy, right? He's got a studio. He's got a big studio. Big guy, big dude, right? Okay. So he knows what a mini disc is. So I'm like, uh, he goes, what format do you wanna bring it up? I'm like, I'm a Sony mini disc. And he's like, all right, cool. Bring it to next week. And then months, maybe a year later, or whatever it was, uh, he comes, well, he come, we, the story gets revealed later, but the following week, he comes back with a mini disc and he goes, here, listen to this stuff. And we put him through the sound system after my show, because I was there performing weekly in Calgary, and it was awesome music, and our relationship you know, went from there. It was, uh, it, it was free sailing from that point onwards. But then afterwards, he tells me, he goes, hey, remember that night where you told me like mini disc? And I'm like, yeah, no problem, see you next week. He goes, I immediately left there and I'm calling all my friends. What the hell is Sony mini disc? Who's got Sony mini disc? I don't even know. Well, who's got... So anyway, he went and bought himself a Sony mini disc player to make sure that he bought it to be on the right format. So that's the kind of relationship we have. So he's uh, been working with me a long time and he's my best friend. So on that note, I hope you have a best friend. If you don't, you call them, reach out to them, create one, say hi, tell them you love them. Love you, Brent. Love the rest of you guys. Thanks for being on Facebook Live. Maybe we'll do it again next Friday. Stay safe out there and stop touching each other for crying out loud.